On July 10th, 1908, the Dutch physicist Heinke Kamerling Onus first liquefied helium at the University of Leiden. He would then go on to discover superconductivity in 1911 and win the Physics Nobel Prize in 1913 for his discoveries. In honor of Kamerling Onus's work and to bring further awareness towards helium conservation, we at Quantum Design would like to announce July 10th as Helium Conservation Day. Whether through helium liquefaction locally at the point of use or by using cryogen-free technologies, Helium Conservation Day aims to highlight efforts from researchers around the world who recycle and eliminate helium waste in the laboratory, hospital, or any other facility that utilizes helium-based cryogenic technologies. We have all played with a helium balloon at some time, but do we know exactly what helium is and what its influence on the world is? Have you ever stopped to think whether helium has other applications that affect our daily lives? How does the existence of helium influence our lives? This is liquid helium, the coldest liquid known to man. Any other element at this temperature should be in a solid state. Using it, we can freeze any kind of material and study its properties at very low temperatures. For example, there are materials that are good conductors at high temperatures, but at low temperatures become superconductors. Using these materials, we can fabricate coils with which we can generate the strongest magnetic fields on Earth. These types of coils, which are cooled using large quantities of liquid helium, are the essential part of magnetic resonance machines. Using magnetic resonance, we can differentiate between white matter and grey matter in the brain, for example. Or we can identify the disc structures of the spinal column. Or we can define shoulder tendons or the meniscus of the knee in great detail. Magnetic resonances are also essential in chemical and pharmaceutical research. Other instruments used for low temperature materials research also require liquid helium in order to function. We have five pieces of equipment with superconducting magnets that are immersed in liquid helium and need liquid helium to work. And this means that we use around 150 or 200 litres of liquid helium a week. Including all our equipment, this represents a total of around 10,000 litres of liquid helium a year. What would happen if there was no more helium on Earth? Have you ever thought about the consequences that this would have? If the current reserves of helium on the planet ran out, I believe that the consequences would be very serious. Since many of the studies that are performed using superconducting coil technology would have to stop using them. If for any reason helium reserves ended, this would represent a major problem insofar as we would not be able to use our magnetic resonance units, and this would represent a major step backwards in the area of health. Also, apart from the consequences this would have for industry, which also uses liquid helium, it would be a serious blow to research carried out at low temperatures. I cannot think of an alternative source to helium in the current operational circumstances of these types of systems, and I believe it would be irreplaceable. Greetings. I'm Greg DeGeller, President of Quantum Design in San Diego. We need to be good stewards of the Earth's precious resources, so we have developed methodologies and equipment to capture, recycle, and reuse helium for our use and to help our customers. Our product development has always focused on optimizing the use and consumption of helium, and we will continue to do so. Thank you for helping us recognize the need for conservation and recycling. Let's all go green for helium. Hello. This is Milton Torricacchi, speaking from my lab at San Diego State University. I want to join in with Quantum Design on the celebration of the 111th anniversary of the liquefaction of helium in Leiden by Kamali owners and collaborators. The body of scientific knowledge developed using cryogenic techniques ever since is enormous and uh, very difficult to overstate. Early on as a physics major in college, I became fascinated with the idea that one could perform experiments in temperatures close to absolute zero. 
I was fortunate enough to have a career in which low temperature was a big part of. And I wish that future generations can enjoy similar opportunities for learning and discovery. Helium gas is a non-renewable natural resource and all the worldwide efforts to conserve and recycle it, they carry great merit. Quantum Design has been a leader in enabling cryogenic technology since the early 1980s. We are probably best known for our squid-based magnetometer, the so-called MPMS, and more general and versatile measurement platform, the PPMS. We currently offer cryogen-free versions of all of our measurement platforms, including our latest offering, a 7 Tesla magneto-optical cryostat, OptiPool. In addition to measurement platforms, we also offer helium recovery, storage, purification, and liquefaction solutions for virtually any cryogenic application. For example, Quantum Design's first truly and completely cryogen-free measurement system, VersaLab, was launched in 2007. Here's Professor Steven Sue from Cal State San Marcos to tell us more about his experiences with the VersaLab. Hi, my name is Steven Sue. I'm a physics professor at California State University San Marcos. The VersaLab serves dual purposes as a workhorse in my condensed matter research laboratory and as a star instrument in our undergraduate advanced laboratory course. Our juniors and seniors are able to perform electrical transport, magnetic, and heat capacity measurements on the same equipment used by scientists around the world. The VersaLab is a great instrument that, by virtue of being completely crowded free, is always ready for measurement without the hassle of securing expensive liquid crowdings. We would like to recognize the seminal work initiated 111 years ago today in Leiden that spawned and enabled a wide range of helium-based cryogenic technologies and industries. Just as a final note on how far we've come in the last century, if we take a look at the lab in Leiden today, we see that liquid helium production has increased by three orders of magnitude. Good morning. My name is Mac Beasley and I'm a professor of applied physics at Stanford University. In both my research in superconductivity and as a past president of the American Physical Society, I am deeply aware of the need for helium conservation. The issue of helium conservation as a policy matter seems to arise episodically. Each time, recognition of its increasing importance is rediscovered and conservation programs maintained or established. The argument is simple but powerful. Helium in liquid form is a unique and increasingly important enabling commodity in cryogenic technologies and in scientific research. And once it is lost to the atmosphere, it is lost forever. It is truly a finite resource. Therefore, in a real way, the conservation of helium is an irreplaceable gift to our children. This may sound hyperbolic, but it's true. I recommend to you the official public statement on the need for helium conservation by the American Physical Society, which is available on their website. Thank you for listening. My name is Stefano Spagna. I'm the Chief Technical Officer at Quantum Design. On July 10, 1908, in his laboratory at Leiden University, the great Dutch physicist Eike Karmeling Omnes experienced the most glorious moment in his career. That day, after 25 years of hard work and perseverance of building up from scratch a cryogenic laboratory and organizing a superb technical support to run it, he liquefied helium, opening an entire new research field of low temperature physics. Nowadays, liquid helium is the lifeblood of tens of thousands of scientists and engineers across the world discovery and innovation landscape, including universities, industries, and national laboratories. Helium is a scarce and non-renewable natural resource. Its availability on Earth is low. And because it is not gravitationally bound to our planet, any time helium is vented and not recovered at the source, it is lost forever. 
and there is no alternative for this important resource when the world supply is exhausted. This is why, on this 111th anniversary of the first liquefaction of liquid helium, Quantum Design is announcing the official launch of a worldwide Helium Conservation Day, aimed at increasing the awareness for helium recovery and recycling around the world. This helium recovery project is not theoretical. It is now something palpable. It is now a reality. In the Dutch research group where I worked in the 1980s, we used to sing a song that said, Helium is het helemaal, which means that helium is everything. Hello, I'm Martin Kugler, the uh, Chief Operating Officer of Quantum Design. Helium is the fuel of our industry and critical resource for our business. Short flashback. Back in 2012, seven years ago, Quantum Design was consuming about 10,000 liters of helium a month, or 120,000 of liquid liters every year. This was called 100% helium waste because it all escaped into the atmosphere. Facing shorter supply and increasing helium cost, this just became unsustainable and irresponsible. This motivated us to develop a helium recycling product line for our customers and to install a helium recycling plant at our factory. Today, cooling technologies have evolved to be more helium friendly and we consume only about 18,000 liters a year. This is an 85% reduction over seven years. Amazing. And it gets better. Our helium recycling plant succeeds in recycling every helium molecule three times before it escapes to the atmosphere. This is a significant contribution to the helium conservation effort. As an analogy, we fill about 3,000 party balloons every day, but we use them at three weddings before they escape into the sky. This is only the beginning. The goal is to keep as much helium on Earth as possible.